mayor of Imperial Beach, Paloma Aguirre. Paloma, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, I guess, I mean, this was a vote that was expected to pass, uh, but can you give us uh, your reaction and if you really think this is going to make a significant difference as far as getting actual action taken on our border? Look, I think first and foremost, I'm very grateful that the county passed this, right? It's It's been a long time coming. Uh, we are in an absolute state of emergency related to the Tijuana River pollution. It's the worst it's ever been. We've had an unprecedented record number of beach closure days for Coronado, Silver Strand, and Pearl Beach and Borderfield State Park. Um, I think that this will really help move the needle because now the ball is in Governor Newsom's court and the president's court. Uh, you know, we've gone through the, the regular mechanisms, the regular processes that are needed to appropriate the necessary funding. But we're talking about an agency, the International Boundary and Water Commission, which is the agency that oversees the International Wastewater Treatment Plant, has been severely underfunded for years, for years. Their entire budget is $60 million per year. They're in charge of all water resources and wastewater infrastructure across the entire border from California to Texas. So I think this will help shine a light on the issue specific to us, but also will help us shine a, uh, shine a light on the issue of underfunding and an issue of increased funding that we need here in the region. I mean, we fought so hard to get the $300 million secured through our congressional delegation, only to find out that now the treatment plan is in severe need of repairs that are gonna cost us half of that money. So. For the federal government and for the state government, $300 million is a, is a drop in the bucket. And we've suffered for decades on this issue. So now they got to they gotta move the needle. They got to come to us and say, hey, um, you know, this is truly a state of emergency. And we have all of these additional resources that you guys need to live a, you know, good quality of life. And we're talking about, you know, not just quality of life, but we're also talking about the severe health impacts that our communities, and not just in Pearl Beach, but in all of South San Diego, are uh, at risk, right? We saw the, the study that Scripps Institution of Oceanography recently published, where all of these pathogens, viruses, bacteria are aerosolized, and we don't know what we're breathing in. And what really keeps me up in, at night is that I don't even, we don't even know if there's surfactants, chemicals, or heavy metals that we're being exposed to that can cause other additional types of illnesses like cancer. So, yes, it's time for the federal and state government to take action. Well, you know, in follow up to that, I mean, we talk about the three hundred million dollars that was allocated. But and you're saying half of that is going to go to what the cost would be to fix one of the sewage plants. But we're not seeing any movement as far as even spending the money that has been allocated, that has to be frustrating. And I wonder, you know, where, you know, if, if you're looking for more federal action and, and even from the governor, where is, is Juan Vargas? Because I, I just haven't really heard much from him on this issue, uh, you know, as, as far as getting federal government to take action. Well, my understanding is the congressional delegation is also seeking to put the pressure on the federal government once um, they cut wind that we're working on the state of emergency. Um, you know, but again, the traditional mechanisms, the red tape, if you will, right, the appropriations process is too slow for us. They, it, 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 they have to go through a whole process where, you know, they put in their proposed uh, allocations and then it has to be approved by both the House and the Senate and then it goes to the president's desk. And it's like I said, it's incremental pro progress that we just cannot afford to have anymore. Uh, the the underfunding for the treatment plant that was revealed this 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 week, you know, the, all of the need and repairs. I want to make make very clear that the three hundred million dollars did not come to the city of Imperial Beach. They did not go to any and nonprofit. It went to EPA. They've been going through the necessary process, the NEPA process, which is the public input, re the public review, public outreach, and now it's reached the stage of design and construction phase. But that's the surprise, right? The hundred and well, I think the UT reported one hundred and fifty million dollars needed in repairs. Um, that is because we've had an unprecedented number of um, wet weather, right? We've had yeah. incredible amounts of rain, and for those 
who don't know about this, Tijuana has a combined stormwater and sewage infrastructure system. So anytime there's severe rains, we have an influx of sediment, silt, trash that all come into the plant and clog it up. And that's why it's it's not functioning the way it should be. So, I mean, I, I don't know how else to spell this out, that there's economic impacts, there's environmental impacts, there's incredible health threats to no, an entire community. I, I think we're all in agreement there. I, I just think at this point, after four decades of dealing with this, plus, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of saying forget the red tape and I'm, yes. you know, lying down on the floor of, of Congress at, with signs if I'm if I'm Congressman Juan Vargas and I'm, you know, getting the attention of, of, of a lot more people because I, I think this is like head banging against the wall frustration at this point. So, uh, Paloma, I, I, we have to let you go, but I, I appreciate the time this morning and uh, we'll see if this declaration of an uh, emergency is something that gets uh, Governor Newsom's attention and hopefully the federal government's as well.